Of all the euphemisms that our political class prefers, it's hard to find a more sinister phrase than mandatory gun buyback. <laughs> it's not a buyback if it's mandatory, it's confiscation, it's theft by force. And now it's the official policy of the Democratic Party. So to, to, to gun owners out there who say, well, a Biden administration means they're going to come for my guns. Bingo. You're right if you have an assault weapon. Do you believe in the mandatory buyback of quote unquote assault weapons? I do believe that we need to do buybacks and I'll tell you why. They are weapons of war with no place on the streets of a civil society. Yeah, so crime rises. Anyone who tries to defend his own family is punished. What is this about? Well, of course, it's terrifying. And no gun confiscation is likely to get through Congress, even if Democrats control both chambers narrowly. It's too unpopular. Millions of new gun owners just this year, you think they want their guns stolen by Kamala Harris? No. But that doesn't mean it couldn't happen without Congress. Kamala Harris has thought a lot about how to do it. Here's how. I will give the United States Congress 100 days to get their act together and have the courage to pass reasonable gun safety laws. And if they fail to do it, then I will take executive action. Yeah, executive action. Of course, she'll exempt her own bodyguards. Needless to say, you'll keep paying for them. They'll be heavily armed. How will this work exactly? Colian Noor has thought a lot about it. He's a gun rights activist. We're happy to have him on tonight. Colian Noor, thanks for coming on. Thanks so, for having me, Tucker. Realistically, do you think it's possible for a Biden administration to destroy the Second Amendment without a vote in Congress? Absolutely. Absolutely. So with, with the idea with the, the executive action that Kamala Harris was referring to, they could get creative with it from the standpoint of saying, well, these particular guns need to live under the NFA Act, which is an act that essentially causes you to register certain firearms and pay a tax on them. And then if you can't do that or afford that particular tax, well, then you'll just have to sell them back to the government at a, at a fraction of the cost. And then that's how they'll go about doing it in that manner. And I think a lot of people are not understanding that. They think, they think that if they can't get it through Congress, they can't find other means to restrict your rights, but they truly can. Millions of Americans are now gun owners, people who were not gun owners a year ago. Crime, mm -hmm. civil disorder have convinced them they need a way to protect their families. A lot of those people wind up without even knowing it, becoming felons under this new scheme. So the biggest problem that I've had for the longest times in my time of being a gun advocate is how little the general public knows about the politics regarding firearms. And like you pointed yeah. out, there are a ton of people who've gone out and bought a ton of guns and don't realize that overnight they could literally become felons based on whatever laws that they try to pass under this particular administration if they get into office. And so the way they've done it, though, is to keep the public largely ignorant about these about about That's firearm right. politics because they shut voices like mine down and other groups and organizations that are pro two way and they do the best that they can to not talk about it and the only time that they actually shine a light on it is when it's something negative that they can utilize to push whatever agenda they're trying to push man if they're telling you you're not allowed to defend yourself i mean that should raise real suspicions about their agenda shouldn't it absolutely but you have to understand tucker the whole point is control. That's what the, that's the overall goal is control. Right. And the most precious thing we have in this world is our life. So the person who can control that or the defense of that is essentially in control. So a that's population right. of people that have firearms that can protect their lives adequately without having to rely on the government isn't under the thumb or the control of the government. So if they can take that from you and force you to depend on them, then they understand that they have the control at that point. And that is their ultimate goal. There's a reason the first two amendments to the Constitution are freedom of speech and religion and the Second Amendment, the right to defend yourself. There's, there, they thought this through, and so have you. Colin Noir, it's great to see you tonight. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Tucker.